You are now the king's special liaison. I don't know if that was such a good idea, Arendor. <laughs> Jason! Jason! Oh yeah. Do you see these red flags? Hello all, Thomas here. I, I hope you are doing well. I don't know about you, but this year is already so much better than last year. Holy shit. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I have good vibes about 2023. I feel like 2022, at least speaking for me personally, was a bit like rough. It was me trying to like find my footing and be comfortable with myself explore new avenues I hadn't before. And now I feel like more confident in myself and what I want to do. And I have like a whole new mindset and approach ready uh, to, to kick this year's ass. I don't know, it's just kind of hitting me now, I guess. So the Winx commentary will continue because I know you guys really enjoy that. I'm about halfway through finishing the shots for episode two of the season six rewrite. So that should be out either later this month or next month. And then of course, after episode two, it'll be like two episode drops at a time. So it'll be like episodes three and four and then five and six and so on. But I'm also considering doing commentary for other shows. I've probably mentioned that before. I've been having a really big Avatar Legend of Korra phase where I'm getting back into it. And also looking back at my like very, very old content when my media diet was just fucking insular as shit. And it makes me want to revisit a lot of stuff. I don't know if you guys would be interested in like commentary or video essays about that kind of stuff. It's been a long while since I did a video essay. I feel like my brain needed a break from scripted, just scripted stuff. Because this is fun. It's not as stressful for me. You guys also enjoy it, but I also kind of do miss the more scripted stuff. So I'm trying to like figure out how to do a balance of that kind of stuff. And there is still fairy tale content in the works. Uh, <laughs> Max and I, uh, Maxwell Media Inc., if you guys don't know, a friend of mine, got me into fairy tale, is getting me into Black Clover. Uh, we had this huge video about, like, the, what shade of gay all the fairy tale characters are, and, uh, <laughs> uh, we have to re-record that, so... <laughs> Oh boy. I mean, it'll, it'll be fun. It'll be lots of fun. I'm sure you guys will really enjoy it. I'm really excited for like fairy tale stuff. Just a lot of good things. A lot of new great things for 2023. Yeah. Now with that out of the way, let us continue our season five journey with the Pillar of Light, also known as, surprisingly, one of the best episodes of the season. I remember when this came out, I was like, are you sure this is season five? I really like the manta rays. I wish we saw more Life of the Infinite Ocean. I should feel the power to rule the infinite ocean. The power of the Emperor's throne flowing through me. But it's not. But it's not. What a whiny little brat. <laughs> <laughs> What is wrong with this thing? Me when the YouTube algorithm decides to fuck me over. Actually, I'm pretty sure the YouTube algorithm is about as unstable as the throne looks. The legs of the throne, oh, they're broken. Oop. We'll break his legs. You're only realizing that now? What happens if it fell? Well, you're underwater, so I guess you would be fine. You wouldn't fall, you just like float. Wait, how did it break? Why is it broken? I am assuming we won't know. We've got to get to the coral circle. Oh, see, the 2D oceans are so pretty and colorful. I really appreciate that a lot of the oceans in 2D are not blue by default. They look so aesthetically pleasing. Season five art book, where are you? Also, appreciation for the adventure outfits. I love these looks. They're cohesive, but still unique. And everyone looks so damn good. I might be I'm kind of surprised that Flora and Musa are rocking the pigtails. Good for them. What? Wait, not me saying Musa rocks pigtails unexpectedly when that was her look for the first three seasons. Look who's here. Why, it's the <gasps> one with the pigtails. <laughs> Bug off, firm head. Have I been so corrupted by long hair Musa that I forgot? Yes. <laughs> Electric chair. I'm going to get crucified for this. I know it. Okay, here's something I don't get. If this is supposed to be like Sirenix training, why are they not transformed? Like, if you're gonna train with Sirenix, wouldn't you be in Sirenix? Oh my god, what is that? Oh my god! What is that? Okay, but like the shadow eel dragon things are terrifying and I love them. Look at these things, they're so gnarly. 
And they cough up ink. Yes. You done lost your damn mind. When you get your damn mind, you call me. Come on, Stella. Use the light of Cyrenics. But I don't know how. This is like the first time I felt threatened by a creature this season. I think maybe also because these things look like deep sea fish. Deep sea fish are terrifying. Like... They're horrific. I do appreciate that we're getting more of the magical reality chamber this season. Oh, I'm sorry. The simulator. <laughs> Four kids terminology is superior. Okay, let's move on. These girls are in need of a magical reality check. Death to all of them. I'm now noticing that Flora's jacket is like a reddish pink, like a coral. It looks so good on her. That is not, <laughs> that is not the thing to focus on. Just see, can you never not be gay for five seconds? I'm just like, can you not be gay for five minutes? You must find that strength inside yourself, Stella. Yes, Miss Fairgonda. What the fuck? This is actually kind of emotional and also so nice that Stella is the main focus here. It's actually a really good setup for the pillar storyline. <laughs> oh, Stella. It's been a rough season for you, girl. Not because you're going through shit, but because the writers slandered the shit out of you. I'm about to end this man's whole career. I really messed up, didn't I, Bloom? Yeah. Bitch, me too! The fuck? Oh my god, Bloom actually being honest, like, yeah, you fucked up, but we'll roll with it. Oh my god, that's actually, it's actually good friendship. Oh my god. Oh god. I wish they were all going through more. Like when season three was going down, Stella had all that shit with her family. I see you're all ready to take my place, Shamara, but I'm afraid you and your scepter will never be up to the task. That was great for her growth. She hasn't really been going through anything like that this season. I know, I know, give it five minutes. <laughs> trauma. Trauma. PTSD. Trauma. Generational trauma. 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 <laughs> Father, Tritanus has turned them into monsters. We know. He has destroyed our family. I must stop him. Is it me? Or do the people of Andros not get a break from like anything? Their world was under siege and nearly was destroyed in season three. Now Tritanus is fucking shit up. Like, give Andros a break, people. Not on my watch. A Neptune's sword. Use it to defeat Tritanus and restore our family. I actually really love this. I'm a bit sad it's not a trident because I feel like a trident is more unique and also fits the vibe of the sea better, but you know, it's fine. This is so cool for her, but knowing that she's not gonna have the sword for long, I'm not going, I'm not gonna let myself take the bait. <sighs> it's powerless on land. It is meant to be wielded in the depths of the ocean. King Neptune's sword. I vow I will not rest until Tritanus is driven from the infinite ocean. Yes, queen, slay, slay, slay your enemies, ruler of one of the realms of men, smite down those that oppose you. Aisha's gonna be such a good queen one day, I swear. <laughs> I don't believe in queens. She is ready to do what it fucking takes as to be expected from a woman based off Beyonce, the real queen of the world. You could say Aisha is an alien superstar. I took this world forever, I'm that girl. And she's in her renaissance. I am tired. The pillars of the infinite ocean. The pillars are the foundation of all the worlds. Okay, but why? Why not? Why? Why not? <laughs> why though? Okay, see, the pillars, I wish they explained them more and why they're so important, but I do like the design of two of them. Ooh! Light and balance. We don't talk about control. Unless it's the album by SZA. All I got is these broken cards. I ain't got no time. Just... I mean, I, I get it. I get it. It's supposed to be a message of like, protect our oceans or like the world will fall apart, which like, I mean, True, true. I'm having flashbacks to oil spills where the water was literally on fire. But at the same time, like, I I feel like the Lord needs a lot of work to like really sell it because I'm not feeling that inherent connection. You know, sister, if we're not careful, we're gonna end up doing the dishes and taking out the trash. Please take this trash out right now. I can't stand it. And I'll be Empress. Yeah! <laughs> I am disgusted. 
Okay, but Darcy and Stormy, like, taking shots at Tritanus behind his back is giving me so much life. Wow, thanks for including us. I will admit, they do a really good job of, like, foreshadowing that Darcy and Stormy are not gonna follow Tritanus for, like, long. They're only doing this for power. They actually fucking can't stand him because, you know, he treats anyone who's not icy like shit. You may not approach the pillar of light. I'm shivering in my shift. God, the Selkies are hideous in 3D and ugh. Technically, they're more capable power-wise than the Pixies were, but yet they feel more helpless than the Pixies ever were. Probably because most of the Selkies are personality-less can cannon fodder. Why was that so difficult to say? Fucking idiot. Cannon fodder with the personality of dirt. <laughs> The Infinite Ocean couldn't spare up any other, like, kind of protection than a bunch of fucking Selkies. You couldn't have, like, creatures guarding the pillars or, like, sentient guards of some sort, like Omnia. The seal! Every time they say the seal, I keep imagining an actual, like, seal animal to appear. And it just, like barks at them, like, very angrily. It doesn't do anything, it just barks at them threateningly. He's just standing there, menacingly! Like, we're in the water. Come on. Where are the narwhals? Narwhals, narwhals, swimming in the ocean, causing a commotion. Um, ciao. Anyway, so... If only we could figure out a way to stop the mutants without hurting them. If only we had our fairy dust. Yes, I am still bitter. Flashback. <laughs> Figure out a way to stop the mutants without hurting them. Idiots! Imbeciles! I. The, I. Mm, you never had this problem with the minions before now. Like, come on. What if I ask my guardian of Cyrenics? Yeah. yeah! You are dumb, unattractive, overweight, unworthy, untalented. Also, is it me or does Stella call on her guardian more than anybody else calls on theirs? Maybe it's because she's voiced by Tara Strong and she was the most affordable. Is there a way to stop our enemies without hurting them? That is a very profound question. And for the answer, you must look into your own heart. Ah, uh, shut up when you think about fuck it. Up. That is some bullshit. I'm so sick of this look into your heart, look inside yourselves bullshit. Like, come on, give us an actual concrete answer. I would have laughed if she, if she was like, sometimes violence is required to protect people from the greater violence of your enemies. <laughs> that would be too fucking real. I thought violence would be the answer. Sometimes you need to beat up the mutant merman before he ruins more lives. It's just how it goes. I like all that violence, give me this function. Something is very wrong. Dark forces are at work, affecting all the worlds. The first time Tritanus has been remotely threatening, and it's not even really because of him, it's because of the effects of what he does. Although I am confused how an eclipse causes tidal waves. Y dark magic, I'm just gonna go with that. Uh, where are y'all's eclipse glasses? This is not safe to be staring at that thing. My eyes! Have y'all learned nothing from Sailor Moon Eternal? Actually, no. Um, I am, I don't talk about Sailor Moon a lot because Toei, you know, gave me a copyright strike just for even breathing Sailor Moon's name. But I, I'm still not a fan of Eternal and the Eternal movies. No, I'm not a fan. Like, they were fine, but like, yeah. And I know Cosmos is super exciting and all because everyone's going to get Game of Thrones, but I just, I don't really care. And it hurts me saying that. Anyway, back to Stella's father about to die. I My father! Without the son, he could, he could die! The woman was too stunned to speak. This, though, like, the stakes of this, like, being made personal, like, the fact that this eclipse directly threatens the life of Stella's father and it, it snaps her back to reality, I, 
I love it. This felt like a shot in the fucking arm when it came out. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, it feels like the first three seasons. Also, first time we're seeing Luna and ooh, the tension between her and Radius. Radius, are you all right? I didn't hear you knock. What is the tea? The girls are fighting. No! <laughs> I kind of love douchey Radius, not gonna lie. Give me this function. I mean, he's the king of like the sun kingdom. He's, he's gonna have an ego the size of the fucking sun that burns as bright. Solaria is fine, and so am I. Now, if you will excuse me. If only you could put aside your pride and accept the help of those who care for you. I, I'm really liking this tension between them. I wish we saw more of it and how it affected Stella though, because like, I feel like this could speak a lot to kids of divorced parents or parents who like really need a divorce, but they stay for the kids. I don't know, it's like non-idealized family situations like that are just plain real for the kids to relate to. I really like that. Is it kind of out of continuity with Solaria reigning like all throughout season three and yet good Radius wasn't gonna die? Kinda, yeah, but I'm willing to look past it for the sake of good drama. And like, we're throwing out so much continuity at this point. I, I just don't care anymore in season five onward. I mean, the writers don't care, so like, why should I? <laughs> She's got a point. The pillars of the infinite ocean. If they are unstable, all of the magic dimension will fall. Something must have weakened one of them. Wait, how do you two know this? That's suspicious. That's weird. Okay, but like, Cyrenix was supposed to be like top secret ancient and that's the only way for people here to get to the infinite ocean. So how would people know about the infinite ocean? Is knowledge about it like limited to the rulers of the magical universe or does everyone know about it? We just don't really talk about it because we don't give a fuck. Like what is, what is the scope of the knowledge? What, come on. So I am Confucian. The king of Solaria cannot live without our sons. Oh, mom. <laughs> There, there, darling. I know. <laughs> Where the fuck has this drama been all season? What the hell? <coughs> Are you kidding me? Why hasn't it just been this tense from Jump? I'm also appreciating that like Bloom is like the leader, but Stella is clearly the main focus. And I guess she's kind of getting a secondary focus, which I'm kind of living for. No, no, I'm going with you. If anybody is going to save my father, it is going to be me. Slay your enemies, ruler of one of the realms of men. That's my girl. <laughs> that is my girl who told Chimera that a scepter is now what makes a princess, breaking it in half, and also terrified the living shit out of Cassandra. <laughs> it's over, Cassandra. You lost. <gasps> oh, I've missed this Stella so much. Die! Although I wish this was like her moment to like explore her lunar magic. <gasps> I just realized. Oh Lord. She draws her magic from like the sun and moon, right? Well, I guess she's fairy of the shining sun now. So like, fuck the moon, I guess. Stella, fairy of the shining sun. <laughs> God, I wish I was dead. But if she draws her power from the sun and the sun is eclipsed, Technically, she shouldn't have her magic or her magic should be severely weakened. And wouldn't that be so interesting? Like, especially because if her if her moon side is still there, but like untapped, it would force her to work with her moon side for like probably the first time ever. Well, not the first time ever. Like she's used it sparingly sometimes, like enchanted moon shield, which is yellow for some reason. Enchanted moon shield! Or like her Charmix mirror spells. It's a mirror shaped jewel. <gasps> the Charmix knows me too well. Mirror Flare! <laughs> Reflecting Mirrors! Or Shining Mirror. Thank you, Winx Decoded, for connecting the mirrors to Lunar Side. Shining Mirror! But, like, it could be such a great moment for her to, like, explore her moon magic. And imagine, too, if Radius found out, wait... You saved us all by using your moon magic when I told you never to. And everyone goes, wait, you told her what? <laughs> the drama. <laughs> it writes itself. It writes its damn self. Literally, this was my brain doing an autofill in like a minute. Ew. 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 
you know, I want to enjoy how, like, tense it is and how the Winks are, like, taking this situation seriously. But the hair color change kind of killed the tension, like, immediately. <laughs> it's like, let's go on an incredibly dangerous mission. But first, let's dye her hair the ugliest colors we can. The pillar of light is under attack! Yeah! No shit, Sherlock! God, the Selkies are hideous. Yes! Yes! I do appreciate that everyone's taking the situation very seriously. This is the most tense the season has felt, and I wish this was the standard. Like, I'm feeling the tension right now. Like, yes, the pillars are stupid MacGuffins that don't matter, but, like, they're at least providing structure for the plot. They're- and they're providing an excuse for the conflict, which is really the best thing a MacGuffin can do. Aside from forced carriage development, but it's not going to do that this season. Hurricane! More generic sirenic spells. God damn it. Still letting Icy do all the fighting, cousin? <laughs> Tritannus is like, I refuse to fight them. <laughs> I really wish Aisha busted out that sword and we got like a fight between her and Tritannus. That would have been lit. Ugh. <laughs> what is that? The seal of the pillar of light. Surrender, witch! It is so weird to hear D. Bradley Baker coming from a Selkie. He also voiced Momo and Councilman Tarlock. It will be just like the good old days. Ready? Whoever came up with the name Spreading Fire needs to be sent to prison. No, oh, you shouldn't have done that, flower girl. I'm shivering in my shift. Oh god, I wish we got more individual conflicts between the Turks and the Winks instead of as collectives. Like, whenever they say flower girl, I get season three flashbacks. <laughs> ah! Okay, Deafening Court, not a bad name, but it's no reverberating notes. Although it could be worse, it could be infinite fucking echo. Mutants! To me, you beast! Do you have to insult your minions every time you summon them, you piece of shit? Blinding threat! No, don't hurt them! They could be my family! When have our spells hurt anybody this season? Or, like, ever? Mom, Dad, you both give me the strength to do this! Light of Sirenics! <laughs> See, I really like the special Sirenic spells. It was say that three times fast. Like, especially for Stella here, it's kind of at an important character moment. And I love that for her. And also it makes Sirenix seem a bit more impressive. I'm really trying not to take shots at Sirenix because I miss Harmonix so badly. I'm trying to be nice to it. I'm just saying, Sirenix in 3D only and Harmonix in 2D, you know, they could have been nice. Both forms get to shine. Just saying. Tritanus, look out! That's what she said. And you know what? I, what was that? Okay, James. That did not just happen. Me. Like, Icy threw herself in the way of an attack for a man? I don't know how to feel about this. Like, on the one hand, it's out of character as shit, and because everyone has written so poorly this season, I hate it. But in theory, I don't think I'm opposed to it because if she did connect to someone that much, I could see her getting to a point of potentially doing that. It would just, you would need really solid, believable writing to get there and this season does not have that. Wow, what a cliffhanger with that slowly falling rock. Surely we couldn't move out of the way as it takes five years to hit us. Yeah, that was, that was actually pretty good. There was good tension. There were good character moments. Stella got to shine. Is, is that a pun? Tritanus was somewhat threatening. I, the only real complaints I have are the Selkies are worthless. The animation is still blech. The Infinite Ocean's lore is lacking. And that ending moment with Icy felt so... Why? But like, I don't know. Season five does have its moments. And there were quite a few in that episode and I really appreciate them. And I wish those were the standard. Anyway, we move on to the eclipse. Total eclipse of the heart. Or the Day of Black Sun, which I uh, thank God Radius is not the Fire Lord. I actually, I guess in the rewrite, you know what? No, I'm just going to let y'all have a panic attack over that for five minutes. What? <laughs> I enjoy tormenting you all. 
I don't know why you stay. We might be divorced, but we're still family, and you're still my king. Oh, I really like that from Luna. Like, that feels kind of mature. Like, they're divorced, but like, they do care about each other somewhat, and they probably always will. And they still have a daughter together, so they still have to like, you know, try to get along for her sake. Again, the tension is great. Light diamond! Okay, but light diamond? I, I love it. I love it. A literal diamond of light. It's what she deserves. Personally, I would prefer um, like a, a barrage of diamonds, kind of like Icy's old Pierce attack. You know, that would be great for her. Pierce attack! <laughs> is it me or is the animation like way more stretchy in this episode compared to last episode? Like the movements are like stretchier and more exaggerated. The facial expressions look more exaggerated, but also kind of more engaging than last episode. Nature six! <laughs> oh god, the kinetic spells. I hate them. Mostly because they feel basic. Okay, here's the thing. If it's a kinetic spell, the point of it is to like be quick and on the fly. And you know it's really not quick? Having to yell out the name of the spell. You tried to protect me. I'd do anything for you, Tritanus. This is disgusting. I really wish they did more with their relationship being toxic, but they still care about each other somewhat. I feel like that could be so interesting, especially for Icy. She's never really had that before. And it's kind of humanizing for her. I don't know. It's like, I really want an exploration of the tricks beyond just being evil. Like, why do they do the things that they do? Why were they working with the ancestral witches? Why did they want the dragon flame? Why were they willing to go to such extremes just to spite the winks? Like, what is it beyond just being evil? Especially like in seasons that are supposed to be more, well, these seasons are not more mature, but like, you know, can we pretend that they are because the winks are continuously getting older? Oh my God. You're 40? Part of it is probably realizing that people who hurt you, they were not excused, but there was a reason why they acted the way that they did. I don't know, I, just, I feel like that'd be very interesting. Like, you can still have them as antagonists while you do that, but you know. Ew! Neptune Sword! <laughs> still bitter we didn't get Aisha with her sword fighting Tritanus with the trident. I We were robbed. I'm kind of impressed that Tressa and Nereus are not horrifying in 3D. My father's sword. But it is yours now. You done lost your damn man. I'm so upset about this. Nereus gets the damn sword and he doesn't even do anything with it. Like he just gets banished to the background for like ages. I hate it. I hate it so much. It should have stayed Aisha's because Aisha's the one continuously fighting Tritanus. I vow to use it to free the infinite ocean from all of Tritanus's evil. Lies, lies, and more lies. I mean, Nereus, you won't do that. The Winx will be doing all of that, but you know, it's fine. And if you wonder if I hate you, I guess I kind of like that the trident cured what was going on with them. There had to be some way to do it. It feels a little bullshit. And why didn't King Neptune do it? But whatever. Like, how did Aisha know that would work and not kill them? And now the pillar is collapsing. All the sons of all the worlds will go dark. Stella is me. I'm like, break this down so I know how screwed we are. We're here. Thank you for making that announcement that no one cared about. We know, we saw you. <laughs> Again, this actually does feel really tense and I'm appreciating that. Okay, this is smart. They're like trying like different avenues of their powers to see what'll work and what won't. And also the first time in forever, Convergence didn't fix something. Oh my God, yay, thank the Lord. Because Convergence is so basic after season three, Jesus. Oh no, it didn't work. The magic of friendship wasn't enough. <gasps> this feels unheard of for this season or these this group of seasons. You, you the light, girly, go. Go forth and shine. I am the fairy of the shining sun, and no one is going to put out the lights on my watch. This does feel like the last season they put in the effort to have all the girls do something. Like a lot of people have pointed that out. Like this is the last season they even tried to like pretend that the other girls who weren't Bloom mattered. And I am seeing that quite a bit. Bloom is still like the center, which is annoying because this conflict has nothing to do with her. It's not over, Tritanus! Who are you again? But everyone else is sort of getting important moments and they feel sincere and I appreciate that. Mom, Dad, this is for you! 
I feel like this would hit more if she were using her lunar magic, like explicitly. She was like, I need the light of the sun and the moon to do this. But, you know, for what it is, it, it was fine. It's fine. Could be a lot better. I keep saying that because, like, for me, the sun and the moon is representative of, like, the two sides of Stella within herself that feel split by her parents' divorce and even, like, Stella's difficulty in like accepting who she is especially like the sun is her outer self that shines and is beloved but her moon self is the one she hides where she feels like vulnerable and scared that no one will love her but on the inside you're a loser you're a nothing nobody likes you (laughs) and i don't know i feel like her like learning to like marry those two within herself even while her parents are still divorced is a really important lesson of like self-love and self-acceptance. I don't like the symbolism is right there. It writes itself. But fine, shining sun or whatever. Ugh. Side note, what sun doesn't shine? I guess dead suns. They're like black holes. I don't fucking know. I don't know why Solaria has all the crystals in season five, but I'm living for that aesthetic. Mainly because I'm a whore for crystals. I <laughs> I love crystals. I do. Aesthetically, yes. Give me, give me crystals. It sparkles and shimmers. It shines and delights. I must have it for my nest. But I feel like they also fit Solaria because they're sort of like prisms of light, especially like the way they're all different colors. Like, I, I love that so much. But now that everything's okay, <gasps> my family won't be. Oh, and she's afraid that because everything is not shitty anymore, her parents will suck. Which is true. They d- they do. Well, mostly Radius. <laughs> oh, supportive friends. Being there for her, but knowing this is, this is something she has to face herself. Poor Stella. She can save the magic dimension, but she can't make her parents get along. Ain't that the fucking truth. <laughs> the one time I've resonated with Bloom. It's like, I'm sorry, I'd rather fight Satan than like deal with this shit. <laughs> that wasn't an invitation, Satan, by the way. I swear to God, if I see crazy ass shit, then I'm gonna fucking, ugh. I thought about what you would do, Dad. And I thought about what Mom would do. And I put them together. Oh, well. Oh, wow. And immediately Radis is like, no, mm-mm, no, learning from your ma, no, mm-mm, mm-mm, there will be no lunary in my house. <laughs> lunary? Moonary? What's happening? Stella deserves more appreciation than that. No, no, it's okay, mom. Oh, uh, no, Luna, Luna's right, though. Radius ego is the size of Jupiter, I swear. Who does she think she is? <sighs> And their annoyance with each other is more pressing than whether their daughter is even okay. This poor fucking girl. PTSD, trauma, post-traumatic stress, female trauma, family trauma, generational trauma, family trauma, you know, generational trauma. I wish we saw more of how this impacted Stella. And I'm also thinking like, maybe the reason why Luna wasn't around during all the season three chaos, like to support Stella or Radius, is because of that tension. Like maybe she felt like she wasn't wanted, especially because, you know, Radius was remarried. And I'm wondering if Stella like holds resentment to her mother for that, for like being absent when the family was in crisis. I don't know, just, there's so much. There is so much here to like dive into. If Tritanus activates the Emperor's throne, he could destroy us all. Destroy us all, destroy us all. I'll take the chicken. Destroy us all! <laughs> Destroy us all! Destroy us all! I'll take the chicken. Destroy us all! I'm imagining Farragana doing that in like the cafeteria to like Master Sfoya. <laughs> Remember him? I do. Normally I would find this funny, but as I am the one with egg on my face, I do not laugh. <laughs> These shoes! I wore them to the Solaria celebration! The last time my parents were happy together! <laughs> Oh, Kiko. Kiko is a good bunny trying to be helpful. Poor Stella. Oh my god. There is so much to unpack. These girls need so much therapy. I swear to god. Oh, you tried, Kiko. I think Stella just needs a while to cry herself out. Sometimes you just need a good cry. Yo, crying feels so good in a way. Like, it feels like a, the most satisfying exhale. Are you free later on? Uh, sure. I can be free. Great. I'll be at Alfia by sundown. Yay! 
Oh, not me being excited for them. Oh my god. I still wish Sky had amnesia, though. I feel like that was such an interesting conflict. And it's better than what's coming. Oh no. It's actually hard to even imagine how terrible things would soon become. It's from Professor Whiskers. He couldn't have sent a text? Ugh, these dramatic professors. Even though I would be exactly the same. <laughs> Each kingdom should deploy its own army and protect its own borders. I agree with Radius. Where the fuck are we? This room is cool as shit. Also, why these four kingdoms? Where are the other kingdoms? I feel like I'm watching a recording of the Paris Accords. <laughs> like a bunch of grown fucking men arguing about whether the world is going to hell while all of us are screaming, please just fucking help us! You both no, know I agree with Radius. Please! Your Majesties! You must decide on a strategy to defeat Tritanus. Love Farragonda shutting all these old men the hell up. Can Farragonda lead us, like, and help us solve climate change, please? I can switch that lunch into next week if you'd like, Queen Samara. I think that might work, Diaspro. Why is Diaspro here? <laughs> you banished her because she drugged your son. How's Diaspro? She is history. After you guys broke that spell, she was banished from Heraklion. We will never hear from her again. Lies, lies, and more lies. And worked with Valtor, the man who tried to kill us all. Why is she? Why are you trusting her with your food? For your food? <laughs> Jason! Jason! Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you see these red flags? I know you drugged my son, but I'm gonna leave you in charge of my lunch. <laughs> I- jail. Literal jail. Still keeping tabs on Sky, are you, Diaspro? And I- oh! Is it me or is Queen Samara more nice than she used to be? Like, I remember in season two, she was nasty. But we'll do anything we can to Young help. lady! You speak out of turn. And now she's like- the most level-headed person this whole season who's only speaking sense? I am confusion. I mean, I'm not complaining, but like, you know. Sadly, your majesty, I don't have the authority to bring the prince back to the palace. Diaspro, take a hint and move the hell on. There are plenty of other princes in the magic dimension, to quote the wise philosopher Chatta Pixie of Gossip. Hey, there are plenty of princes in the magic dimension. Pick another man, or pick a lady, or pick an Envy. Pick a rock. Pick anyone who is not Sky. Like, I remember in the comics, Roxy got a boyfriend, which slander, Roxy's a sapphic icon, how dare you. But like, he looked like budget Sky. Diaspora could hook up with him if she's into blonde men. I'm just saying. Also, I noticed um, the guards like of Heraklion, like they historically have enjoyed crop top armor, which like my gay self is thoroughly appreciated. Can you not be gay for five minutes? But like here their, their stomachs are like, they have like fabric over them. And I'm like, I understand like for the children, the puritanical culture, but at the same time, how dare you? Men in crop tops. A whore. <laughs> oh god, 2D Sirenix, why? See, even pacing wise it would have been interesting because if it was Harmonix 2D, Sirenix 3D, then like episode 14 would have been a bit of both, but mostly Sirenix. 15 would have been exclusively Sirenix. 16 would have been Sirenix at the first half and then Harmonix here. I feel like there would be a very nice balance between the transformations. I don't know. I just, I don't like this whole, like, we get a new form, so we throw the old one out. I feel like that's so fucking wasteful and uninteresting. I really am a fan of the revolving set of transformation ideas. I'm sorry, Urza Scarlet has brought me the wisdom we sorely need in this house. God, I need to talk about fairy tale already. I need to gush about Urza and Lucy so fucking much, man. Urza. Very clever, Stella. Ugh. Oh, the Sirenic spells. They're not awful, they're just kind of basic. They're a little bit more visually interesting than the Believic spells, but Believic spells had better names overall. Like, I'm sorry, Solar Storm, Techno Shock, Andros motherfucking Hurricane. How do you get better than that? Golden Disc! Oh God, and you have Golden Disc, which is the poor man's serious shield. D jail. I realize I'm the only person who notices this, but I have to complain to someone. And my microphone is right here. Fight fire with fire! What does that mean? 
fucking idiot. Okay, that's actually a kind of clever solution to fight the creature. They're kind of fighting smart. But at the same time, it's like, this does feel like a reset. This feels like a new season one for the show. Like, they're learning lessons that they already have learned in the first three seasons of how to fight smart. And it's like a retread of, like, ground we've already covered, which is what a retread is. Hello, redundant. This is what happens when I don't have script and I go on recording for, like, nearly an hour. (laughs) I do actually really like the presentation of, like, the logic net. And this visual of them, like, stretching it out as, like, to fire back the pollution, I really like it. You did that? Of course! Now that you have the power of Cyrenics, you must learn to use it. Well, that's one way to get the training in. Alfia professors are a special kind of crazy. On my mark, they'll charge. You've got to find a way to stop them before they reach you. What happens if we don't? Their anti-magic could erase your powers for good. Flora, you go first. We defeated the monster by using its own toxic powers against it. One that they're not gonna put in place against Tritanus, like, ever. <laughs> Honestly, when we get to, like, how to actually defeat Tritanus, the answer is so glaringly obvious that I'm screaming that no one did this 25 episodes ago. But we'll save that breakdown for later. <laughs> Help. Oh, the cafe outfits are stunning. Look at these fucking looks. Look at that scarf. One of the few times Bloom looks good in pink. I assume because it's a more purplish pink, but we'll... I digress. I'm always thinking about you, Bloom. You're the first thing on my mind when I wake up and the last thing I think about before I go to sleep. Why can't we have more of this? Do we need an arbitrary conflict for this? Like, why can't... (sighs) Relationships are a lot. Like, they're, they're difficult enough to navigate without arbitrary bullshit getting in the way. And also, like, it's sometimes more interesting to watch a couple that's healthy navigate their lives trying to maintain the relationship like we don't need this diaspora nonsense we can just have them be a couple dealing with tritanus and all this other shit together and like see them navigate it as a healthy couple you have to return to the palace at once get in i am the king's special liaison i speak in his name (sighs) okay so we we can all agree that as stupid as the amnesia plot was it was not as stupid as this right like we all agree on that too bad for you bloom this bitch is getting on my nerves i just i i'm having flashbacks to that one woman in the movie who kind of looked like diaspora even though she had a completely different hair color but because she like served the same role as diaspora and had the same kind of attitude I just, this is one of the worst subplots in the whole show, and I'm not looking forward to the rest of it. Ugh. So that was the eclipse. It was, it was fine. It it happened. I don't know. I just, those episodes were like really good. Probably some of the best out of season five, and I'm not looking forward to the rest because I know it's downhill from here. Like, radically downhill. Anyway, I, I hope y'all enjoyed. Um, that's it. <laughs>